here in conversation with Advocate Matthews in Edinburgh. Sir, I've called you specifically because I listened to your interview with Red Mike and there I heard you say that judges do not have the power to decide matters concerning the public behind their backs. So if this is an infringement of our fundamental rights, surely the, the Chief Justice and all the other judges are aware of this. Why then do they insist on passing such judgments? See, whether the judges are conscious about it, I have no idea. But what I say is a fundamental principles. The jurisdiction of the court is to bind by his decision even an erroneous one between the parties, the, part, the parties who are before it. The courts have no jurisdiction to decide matters concerning the public at large behind their back. Because the foundation of the, the legal system is the principles of natural justice. So the, no court has the power to decide a matter without hearing the party affected. In the concept of body out of bottom, concept of natural justice. So when then the only other exception is there's representative suits. Suppose a issue where the rights of a large number of people are involved, then a notice has to be given there. Everyone of such person has to be made possible, made a party. And if they are so numerous, then the, what, has, what is required is to give a notice, uh, public notice, an advertisement in the newspaper. And such a, and the public should be say, told that such and such a suit has been filed, such a, seeking such and such relief. And if you are interested, you can participate. So then it, that is something called class action. So, and the CPC provide for it. And order one rule eight two of the CPC, it requires the, the Notice to be given, and when, when the numbers are numerous by publication in newspapers, and such a such a judgment will be binding, and binding on all. But then the other category is, you know, you, the, something called judgment in rum. The representative suit judgment is not judgment in rum. Rum means affecting the public at large, those who are not even party to the proceedings. So the representative suit will only bind. The parties before it. I, I to set an example of Kerala church cases. So in a case in a between two factions, the Jacobin faction and the Orthodox faction, there were disputes. Such disputes were heard and decided in, in, a, in a representative proceedings. And the representative proceedings, the the judgment will be binding on those uh, the churches, the parishioners, trustees who were before the court and not others. And uh, and the court in uh, reality. It said the judgment is binding on the those who are, the other churches who are not parties. That has led to the such a calamity in Kerala. I, I don't want to keep this uh, video long. The file I'm not going into the details. Now, the other is the concept is the judgment in drum. That is, for instance, a judgment in drum. That is something concerning the uh, where the title or status is involved. It will affect. They probably, you know, those, even those who are not parties before it. They, I can cite an example, the case of a husband and wife in a proceedings for divorce. Where a divorce is granted, the judgment is rum. And that is, it is binding us against the old world. Where a divorce is reje re uh, rejected, the judgment remains, the main judgment in personal because it doesn't concern the public. The reason is, once a divorce is granted, any member of the, the, the husband and wife, they are free. They are to enter into, they are free to enter into a marriage with anyone of their choice. And the person who contracted a marriage will not be committing an offense. So that is, that concept at the stage of the, when the divorce suit, at that stage, nobody else has a right to be heard. Right. So in a judgment in realm of that nature also, there is no violation of the principles of natural justice. And the only person we can file a institute of proceedings for the public at large is the attorney general because he represents the elected government and the, the, the executive, which is account, ultimately accountable to the legislature and the people. Now, the unfortunate scenario here is see, all this P8 business came uh, during the emergency time, the image of the judiciary was very badly affected. 
So that I, you know, I may be forgiven. In reality, I believe, and many people have said so. The Jesus, the Chandrajur, Bhagavad Gita, all took up, uh, even, even entertain a letter as a PAL. And that is called pro bono litigation. And letter of whom? A person in jail who, out of his poverty, illiteracy, and other limitations, couldn't have approached a court. So, madam, you are taking up a cause of a man in jail under trial. You are not the real petitioner. The real petitioner is the man in jail. So, though, though the petition is filed not in the name of the person, but in the name of the, public, the person who is acting for the benefit of the man. But the real petitioner is the man in jail. And it is, for the, it is not for any public interest. It is for the enforcement of the private right of a man in jail. And the uh, law which is, uh, you know, by recourse to the public law. Public law remedy, the writ exercise is considered to be public law remedy. But the difference between public law remedy and private law remedy, I'm not going to for one a short of time. So there's of time. So therefore, the, therefore, it's a fundamental that courts have no jurisdiction at all to decide anything concerning at the public at large. And that, that is in the exclusive domain of the parliament. And the, the, look at this, this uh, the, the, the reason, the jurisprudence. The parliament, we all, every subject is present in the parliament, which is symbolically present. It is with our consent, a law is enacted. And record of a court, uh, sorry, record of a parliament, therefore, is binding on all. The record of a court is only binding on the parties before it and nobody else. And this, see, uh, you know, why uh, the judges, uh, I, I say, in a, in a, we live in a country where we don't have the freedom to criticize the uh, judges. But in ideally, in jurisprudence, nothing prevents me from criticizing a court. See, our concepts come, all our uh, law come from Rome. And the concept is, I quote, let me quote the Latin maxim. De fido officio judicis non recipit question. About the integrity of honesty of a judge, no question can be asked. But de essentia, saive sit, era juris, saive facti. De essentia means about his knowledge and his decision on facts and law can always be questioned. So I'm free to criticize the judgments. I'm not criticizing any judge, uh, the, the judges. About the knowledge of a judge, see, this in sure. We can, we, can, we can question the knowledge of the judge also, but I'm not doing that. I'm not saying anything of the sort. I'm only saying that these judgments, the entire PAL business is completely Nicolan and so basic jurisprudence. And if you ask me why people like uh, Valin Ariman, uh, Rahodgi, Varasharan, uh, all these very eminent people, uh, are, are they are uh, unaware of these fundamental principles of law? It is something which is uh, difficult for me to even fathom or answer. All the time, saying what if I'm saying whatever I'm saying is a fundamental principles. If I'm wrong, people should correct it. And uh, you know, I, I don't claim any kind of uh, you, you know great knowledge or uh, erudition, nothing. Uh, and if I'm wrong, I must be corrected. But this pro bono litigation, I'm absolutely, because who can go to a court? A person who, whose rights are infringed and where a fundamental right is infringed, straight to the Supreme Court under Article 32 without recourse to any other court. So that is the focus, that is the importance which was given by the founding fathers to the fundamental rights. And what I'm objecting is a forum which is for the enforcement of fundamental right under Article 32 is being abused by I'm sorry to name even people like Prashant Bhushan and all, even but Nariman also did it. They invoke, they come to the court and say that none of our rights are, why are you here? Judge should ask, why are you here? None of our rights are infringed. The basic structure is infringed. So the, look at that, the basic structure is, uh, principle is also equally, it's, it's a, an absolutely, uh, uh, an absolute mistake, an absolute error. See, basic structure is something which you should discuss in Parliament. If a basic structure, see, you know, the secularism is a basic structure. If Parliament makes a law which uh, says that, say, I'm from a minority community, I would never allow 
uh, never to be seen any of the, uh, the government parliament passing any uh, law which would curtail the freedom of worship of the uh, Christian minorities or uh, their right to an education institution, nothing of this sort. So then if the parliament makes such a law which curtails the, the fundamental rights of the minorities, freedom of speech, etc., then you come to the court and plead that my fundamental right of freedom of speech is infringed and constitution especially provide for it. Why do you use the word basis structure? So the, all this, this meaningless word of basis structure, we can be discussed, basis structure concept can be discussed in parliament. You can say that when a constitution amendment is discussed in parliament, the parliamentarians can say it is violative of the basis structure. Don't bring it. But when you go to a court, you don't use a meaningless expression like from the context of jurisprudence in a court, a meaningless expression like basis structure. Instead, you must be using that my rights are infringed, fundamental rights are infringed. And the, the you know, the fallacy is, or the agonial situation is, there are thousands of judgments rendered by the Supreme Court, all founded on the, the, the basis structure theory. And the, I should say all these judgments, and we have, see, nowhere in the world, we, I don't think, we, there, there's such a calamity of thousands and thousands of judgments, endless judgments, and the judges' rights, so, so, such a, so the thousands of hundreds of pages. You know, and it is, it, I, I have written an article saying that, uh, is, it, uh, is, is, is it weird to say that uh, burn all law reports to save our justice the jury system. So the, uh, the what I am very sad, if it's uh, sorry for this, that law has literally been made a us. And a, a simple subject has been made complicated. And look at that, the parliament has been reduced to, a, you know, a subordinate entity. They cause all these judgments. Let me say, electoral bond, I'm disinterested in that. Okay, I'm I'm questioning it because as a lawyer, somebody has approached me. Therefore, I took up that issue. Nothing beyond that. And I'm as a lawyer, I have a right to or even a duty even to represent and ask him. So that 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 doesn't go into that. I am against you know the court sitting in as a separate authority. In you know, claiming a sitting in appeal over the wisdom of the legislature, and the classic example is the NJAC case. Today we have the entire Supreme Court. It is a somebody says a Sun's Court of India. Yeah, it is all the immediate kid and kin of the judges, senior law, politicians, uh, the entire. And who look at the, if I'm wrong, these are statistics. Who are going to be who are the who are the past chief justices and who are going to be the future chief justices? I have nothing against anybody in person. I hold them all competent, etc. But I say that in if a in a democratic country of ours like ours, and when the judge, judges they they were not today they are not uh, confined to the job of a judge. They are running the country. They are a supreme parliament, and you know, and then they if ever the judge. Every chief justice is a son, a nephew, and uh, of the former or the former chief justices or daughter uh, of former uh, or the sons of governors, chief ministers. Then we are not a democracy. If, if they, if when the kitankin of the uh, judges occupy all the senior position, that results in a denial of equal opportunity to the less fortunate one. And we can't say that only the the the, the, the kind of the judges are I, I consider them all competent. I'm not denying that. There's but there are equally competent people from the commoners in that in the in the, in the administrative service, you don't find there any such succession. So in India, the the they say judiciary is such a powerful institution. Actually, they have virtually you know uh, uh, usher the powers. Or the parliament and the government, and they have made the executive, political executive, the prime minister, the chief minister, is all you know, subordinate to them. It is not good for a, a democracy. See, I but I say that this I, as a lawyer, I'm duty bound to 
stand for the, the judicial independence and the the the, the, so the sovereignty of the judiciary in matters which are justiciable. The courts is supreme. Even when a court has hanged or a convicted an innocent man ordered or to be hanged, and where an innocent man is hanged, I still accept it because a judiciary within its domain is free to err. I, I can say a, a few examples. There's a there's a lift operator from Calcutta. I forgot his name. And I, I know a lawyer who conducted his case. He was an innocent man. He was found guilty by the court and he was hanged. That is, and there are instances in the history, in even in India, where somebody was convicted of murder. And the, after he was hanged, the man who was alleged to have been killed came up. So therefore, to the convicting the innocent, it doesn't, it, it happens in years also. There's a book called Convict, Convicting the Innocent. So that there also, I don't criticize the judiciary. If a court, their human institution makes a and holds an innocent man guilty of murder and send him to the gallows. Yes, it's unfortunate, but still legal. But this, they say that they have, nobody, neither the court nor the parliament has the exclusive, uh, you know, can claim the exclusive, uh, can claim to be infallible. Or uh, exclusive wisdom. Parliament, if the uh, parliament very often makes wrong laws, the parliament may, may commit mistakes, then there is a mechanism for correction. A law enacted by the parliament, if it is on a matter of policy, if it is affecting a fundamental right, yes, you can come to a court. But that fundamental right is concerning to a particular individual. It cannot be a somebody cannot, this cannot be a case that somebody is saying that. Uh, you know, the fundamental right of 140 crore people is affected. So, instead, here, the electoral bond issue, you know, I'm, I, I may agree with the court when on, a, on it, if it is the parliament, if the, if the Supreme Court, if we can legally be an appellate authority of the parliament, I may agree with the reasoning of the Supreme Court. But my point is, Supreme Court cannot be an appellate authority of the parliament. If the parliament is wrong, there's a mechanism to correct it. See, if the Modi is wrong, his government, he should be, the elections are coming, throw him out. That is democracy. So, therefore, this, this unfortunate, my role is, because, you see, I have been, I have been attacked and persecuted. Even, even when I murmur, somebody would say that I am shouting. And I can tell you cases where, you know, I was targeted, and false cases were, you know, in, 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 in instituted against me in under the Contempt of Courts Act. In a short video, I don't say, I don't have time to say all those things. But I tell you, uh, the this is any man convicted me for contempt of court. What is the why he was he was terribly angry with me? But I don't have any anger towards him. I believe in the philosophy of forgiveness. Lord, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. So I have nothing against Justice Nariman. But the reason for Justice Nariman's anger towards me was that I questioned the Nariman's practice in Supreme Court where his son is a uh, judge. And this, and that too, he was taking up, the, his son was in a collegium. And the collegium's administrative decisions were challenged on the judicial side. And uh, those, therefore, that, that was, see, there is a clear con conflict of interest. And therefore, I filed a petition in the Delhi High Court, uh, naming Nariman as a respondent, and for a declaration that uh, he is uh, barred from practicing in the Supreme Court, where his son is a judge. And you look here, the uh, Bar Council rules especially prohibit a lawyer from practicing before a court where his immediate relative is a judge. Then there's an explanation was added. We said the court does not mean the entire court, but the particular uh, bench of which the, the judge who is relating is a member, and of, obviously before that particular judge. So therefore, that was a pure, it is nothing personal about it. Nothing personal about it. And uh, this is, Nariman took it very personally, and he convicted for me a condemned of court without a notice. In my absence, 
without without hearing me, without a lawyer. And even, you know, even the dark ages, dark ages also such a thing shouldn't have happened. And when I say pity for that man, when he talks about uh, fundamental rights, freedom of speech, you know, say the, uh, what you must, you must practice what you preach, but still, I have nothing against him. If that man calls me for a tea, I will certainly join for a tea. Nothing is, I have nothing against anybody. No, whatever I have taken, I continue to take public issues because today, if I don't speak, I don't find anybody else to speak because the, our entire bar, psychofancy, the, 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 you know, the psychofancy has become the 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 norms and why is the reason reason is if a lawyer shows some element of independence then his career is finished so you to be you know a lawyer a young lawyer i think of either to become a judge which is a very powerful office or to become a senior lawyer and if you don't become either of the two then you don't have much of a space or place in the system so they become they become literally slaves. So therefore, uh, my, I, I am dedicated myself. I am Dr. 65. If God, you know, gives me life, uh, you know, then whatever time I have, you know, I work for the improvement of the institutional judiciary. This institution is for the poor people. Lawyers who cannot speak good English, lawyers who cannot write good English, even though so, because they represent the common, the poorest of the poor people. And I say so because I am somebody from my village. I started learning, you know, English after becoming a lawyer. So this current system is where the elite has all the advantage. It is most unfair. And anybody who resent, who point out the mistake is persecuted. Thank you.